the solid state. Introduction We all know that liquids and gases are called fluids because of their ability to flow. The fluidity in both of these states is due to the fact that the molecules are free to move about. Matter exists in three states, namely solid, liquid and gas. The following are the characteristic properties of the solid state. Amorphous and crystalline solids. Solids can be classified as crystalline or amorphous on the basis of the nature of order present in the arrangement of their constituent particle. A crystalline solid usually consists of a large number of small crystals, each of them having a definite characteristic geometrical shape. An amorphous solid consists of particles of irregular shape. The structures of quads, crystalline, and quads glass, amorphous, respectively. Some of their physical properties like electrical resistance or refractive index show different values when measured along different directions in the same crystal. This arises from different arrangement of particles in different directions as shown. Since the arrangement of particles is different along different directions, the value of same physical property is found to be different along each direction. Differences between amorphous and crystalline solids. Crystalline solids are anisotropic in nature, whereas amorphous solids are isotropic in nature. It is because there is no long-range order in them and arrangement is irregular along all the directions. The other differences are shown in the table. Classification Crystalline solids can be classified on the basis of nature of intermolecular forces operating in them into four categories, namely molecular, ionic, metallic and covalent solids. Molecules are the constituent particles of molecular solids. These are further subdivided into the following categories as shown. Ionic solids. Ions are the constituent particles of ionic solids. Such solids are formed by the three-dimensional arrangements of cations and anions bound by strong electrostatic forces. These solids are hard and brittle in nature. They have high melting and boiling points. Given above are pictures of different three-dimensional representations of NaCl. Metallic solids. Metals are orderly collection of positive ions surrounded by and held together by a sea of free electrons. These electrons are mobile and are evenly spread out throughout the crystal. Each metal atom contributes one or more electrons towards this sea of mobile electrons. These free and mobile electrons are responsible for high electrical and thermal conductivity of metals. When an electrical field is applied, these electrons flow through the network of positive ions. The conventional simple cubic unit cell and face-centered cubic lattice of metallic solids are shown above. Covalent or network solids. These are made up of atoms connected by covalent bonds. The intermolecular forces are covalent bonds as well, characterized as being very hard with very high melting points and being poor conductors. Examples of this type of solid are diamond and graphite. As you can see above, graphite has only 2D hexagonal structure and therefore is not hard like diamond. Types of solids. The different types of solids and their characteristics are given in the table. Crystal lattices and unit cells. There are only 14 possible three dimensional lattices. These are called Bravais lattices. The Bravais lattices are sometimes called space lattices. The lattices can be used to describe the geometrical symmetry of a crystal. All crystals can be described by one of the 14 arrangements unit cells. Unit cell is the smallest portion of a crystal lattice which, when repeated in different directions, generates the entire lattice. A unit cell is characterized by its dimensions along the three edges A, B and C. These edges may or may not be mutually perpendicular. Angles between the edges alpha between B and C, beta between A and C and gamma 
between A and B. Thus, a unit cell is characterized by six parameters A, B, C, alpha, beta, and gamma. The structures of the unit cell for a variety of salts primitive unit cells and centered unit cells. Unit cells can be broadly divided into two categories primitive and centered unit cells. Primitive unit cells when constituent particles are present only on the corner positions of a unit cell, it is called as primitive unit cell. Centered unit cells when a unit cell contains one or more constituent particles present at positions other than corners in addition to those at corners, it is called a centered unit cell. Centered unit cells are of three types as shown. Primitive cubic unit cell Primitive cubic unit cell has atoms only at its corner. Each atom at a corner is shared between eight adjacent unit cells, four unit cells in the same layer and four unit cells of the upper layer. Therefore, only one-eighth of an atom or molecule actually belongs to a particular unit cell. A primitive cubic unit cell has been depicted in three different ways represents only the center of the particle occupying that position and not its actual size called as open structures. Depicts space filling representation of the unit cell with actual particle size shows the actual portions of different atoms present in a cubic unit cell. Body centered cubic unit cell. A body centered cubic unit cell, an atom at each of its corners and also one atom at its body center, an open structure, space filling model, and the unit cell with portions of atoms actually belonging to it. It can be seen that the atom at the body center wholly belongs to the cell in which it is present. Face centered cubic unit. A face centered cubic unit cell contains atoms at all the corners and at the center of all the faces of the cube. It can be seen that each atom located at the face center is shared between two adjacent unit cells and only half of each atom belongs to a unit cell. Open structure B. Space filling model and C. The unit cell with portions of atoms actually belonging to it. Close packed structures Close packing in one dimension there is only one way of arranging spheres in a one-dimensional close-packed structure, that is, to arrange them in a row and touching each other. In this arrangement, each sphere is in contact with two of its neighbors. The number of nearest neighbors of a particle is called its coordination number. Thus, in one-dimensional close-packed arrangement, the coordination number is 2. Close-packing in two dimensions Two-dimensional close-packed structure can be generated by placing the rows of close-packed spheres. This can be done in two different ways. One, the second row may be placed in contact with the first one such that the sphere of the second row are exactly above those of the first row. The spheres of the two rows are aligned horizontally as well as vertically. If we call the first row as A-type row, the second row being exactly the same as the first one is also of A type. Similarly, we may place more rows to obtain A, A, A type of arrangement, close packing in three dimensions. All real structures are three dimensional structures. They can be obtained by stacking two dimensional layers one above the other. Let us see what types of three dimensional close packing can be obtained from these. One. Three dimensional close packing from two dimensional square close packed layers. Two, three dimensional close packing from two dimensional hexagonal close packed layers. Three dimensional close packed structure can be generated by placing one over the other. Let us take a two dimensional hexagonal close packed layer A and place a similar layer above it such that. The spheres of the second layer are placed in the depressions of the first layer. Let us call the second layer as B. It can be observed from figure that not all the triangular voids of the first layer are covered by the spheres of the second layer. Wherever a sphere of the second layer is above the void of the first layer, 
a tetrahedral voids is formed. These voids are called tetrahedral voids because a tetrahedron is formed when the centers of these four spheres are joined. They have been marked as T. Tetrahedral and octahedral voids. At other places, the triangular voids in the second layer are above the triangular voids in the first layer and the triangular shapes of these do not overlap. One of them has the apex of the triangle pointing upwards and the other downwards. These voids have been marked as O. Such voids are surrounded by six spheres and are called octahedral voids. One such void has been shown separately placing third layer over the second layer. When third layer is placed over the second, there are two possibilities covering tetrahedral voids. Tetrahedral voids of the second layer may be covered by the spheres of the third layer. In this case, the spheres of the third layer are exactly aligned with those of the first layer. Thus, the pattern of spheres is repeated in alternate layers. This pattern is often written as ABAB pattern. This structure is called hexagonal close-packed structure covering octahedral voids. The third layer may be placed above the second layer in a manner such that its spheres cover the octahedral voids. This arrangement is called ICI type. Only when fourth layer is placed, its spheres are aligned with those of the first layer. This pattern of layers is often written as ABCABC. This structure is called cubic close packed or face centered cubic structure. Metals such as copper and silver crystallize in this structure. Locating tetrahedral voids. Let us consider a unit cell of CCP or FCC lattice. The unit cell is divided into eight small cubes. These structures are illustrated locating octahedral voids. Let us again consider a unit cell of CCP or FCC lattice. The body center of the cube, C, is not occupied, but it is surrounded by six atoms on face centers. If these face centers are joined, an octahedron is generated. Thus, this unit cell has one octahedral void at the body center of the cube. Besides the body center, there is one octahedral void at the center of each of the 12 edges. It is surrounded by six atoms, three belonging to the same unit cell and three belonging to two adjacent unit cells. Packing efficiency. Packing efficiency is the percentage of total space filled by the particles. Let us calculate the packing efficiency in different types of structures. Both types of close packing are equally efficient. Let us calculate the efficiency of packing in CCP structure. Let the unit cell edge length PA and face diagonal AC is equal to B. We know that each unit cell in CCP structure has effectively four spheres. Total volume of four spheres is equal to four into 4 by 3 pi r cubed and volume of the cube is a cubed. Efficiency of packing in body-centered cubic structures. It is clear that the atom at the center will be in touch with the other two atoms diagonally arranged. The length of the body diagonal C is equal to 4 r, where r is the radius of the spheres along the diagonal that touch each other. Packing efficiency in a simple cubic lattice. In a simple cubic lattice, the atoms are located only on the corners of the cube. The particles touch each other along the edge. Thus, the edge length or side of the cube A and the radius of each particle R are related as shown. Thus, we may conclude that CCP and HCP structures have maximum packing efficiency. Point defects. Point defects are the irregularities or deviations from ideal arrangement around a point or an atom in a crystalline substance, whereas the line defects are the irregularities or deviations 
from ideal arrangement in entire rows of lattice points. Point defects can be classified into three types, stoichiometric defects, impurity defects, and non-stoichiometric defects. Types of point defects, stoichiometric defects. These are the point defects that do not disturb the stoichiometry of the solid. They are also called intrinsic or thermodynamic defects. Basically, these are of two types, vacancy defects and interstitial defects. Vacancy defects. When some of the lattice sites are vacant, the crystal is said to have vacancy defect. This results in decrease in density of the substance. Interstitial defect. When some constituent particles occupy an interstitial site, the crystal is said to have interstitial defect. This defect increases the density of the substance. Frenkel defect. This defect is shown by ionic solids. The smaller ion is dislocated from its normal site to an interstitial site. It creates a vacancy defect at its original site and an interstitial defect at its new location. Scott key defect. It is basically a vacancy defect in ionic solids. In order to maintain electrical neutrality, the number of missing cations and anions are equal. Like simple vacancy defect, Scott key defect also decreases the density of the substance. Scott key defect is shown by ionic substances in which the cation and anion are of almost similar sizes. Conduction of electricity in semiconductors. In case of semiconductors, the gap between the valence band and conduction band is small. Therefore, some electrons may jump to conduction band and show some conductivity. Electrical conductivity of semiconductors increases with rise in temperature since more electrons can jump to the conduction band. Substances like silicon and germanium show this type of behavior and are called intrinsic semiconductors. Magnetic property of electrons. Every substance has some magnetic property associated with it. The origin of these properties lies in the electrons. Each electron in an atom behaves like a tiny magnet. Its magnetic moment originates from two types of motions. One, its orbital motion around the nucleus and two, its spin around its own axis. Electron being a charged particle and undergoing these motions can be considered as a small loop of current which possesses a magnetic moment. Thus, each electron has a permanent spin and an orbital magnetic moment associated with it.